Well, look, let's talk more about uh, French-India uh, uh, relations. Uh, Sarav Jahav is a director of the uh, Delhi Defence Review. Uh, Sarav, thanks very much for speaking to France 24 this evening. Uh, you heard from our, our correspondent there, the red uh, carpet treatment is being rolled out for Narendra Modi here in France for the next two days. Uh, what do you make of the French-India relationship? Is it reciprocal or is one side getting more than the other? Your thoughts on that? Oh, well, uh, the symbolism, the symbolism of uh, Modi's reception, obviously, you know, ties in with the traditional strategic bonhomie between India and France, and uh, naturally, the uh, relationship, as old and tested as uh, the one that we have with France, cannot but be reciprocal in some sense, given its longevity. So it's not one-sided in any way. It has blossomed into what I would say is a multifaceted global uh, relationship. But obviously, at the core of it lies military-industrial cooperation. So, well, uh, yeah. Absolutely, uh, Sarav. And let's think back to 2015 when, you know, there was this landmark deal for uh, Rafael fighter jets. Uh, could we see kind of uh, more evolution, if you will, of the military-industrial uh, relationship with, uh, with France and India? Is the only way up from here, in your opinion? Yes, it is, in fact. Uh, uh, you know, I heard your reporter say that we don't have a large military industrial sector. That is not actually true, right? We don't have one that is obviously as large as that of the uh, Chinese, but we don't have one which is insubstantial either. And what we are looking for is uh, essentially co-development, right? And uh, uh, the, that is what the French, the Indo-French relationship has to graduate towards the core development and and uh, co-production of weapons, obviously. And co-production not only in the sense of, you know, just a licensed production deal, but it'll be, there'll be components that will be, that'll be flowing from Indian companies to French planes as well, which is actually happening. Indian tier one, tier two, tier three suppliers, they are plugged in with the global supply chain, with the global aerospace and defense supply chain. So, so and India is looking to grow that further. OK, so still yeah. more, to, more to come, I hear you say, Sarav. Right, let's talk geopolitics. You touched on China there. That's, of course, the elephant in the room. Is that, in your view, why uh, both the US and France are wanting to kind of cosy up uh, to India or continue uh, good relations, you might say, because they're worried about China's influence, you might say? Well, that is the uh, sort of, that is the standard refrain nowadays. But I have a bit of a... A slightly contrarian view here. I think the India-France and India-US relationship stand on their own merits. You see, the, uh, the, the People's Republic of China emerged as the uh, as the linchpin of the global supply chain, if you like. They began when things began to be made in the world. They were basically made mostly in China. They began to be made mostly in China. Then the pandemic happened and uh, supply chains got disrupted. Of course, there were these big fiscal, uh, you know, fiscal support that was given in the Western economies. But the bottom line is that the disruption of supply chains played a major role in entrenching inflation in the Western economies. Today, if the West has to again get out of that sort of inflationary mode that it is in, it needs a new hub for production and one which it can rely on. And the only country which has the scale, whether in terms of human resources, whether in terms of uh, sheer land mass that can be put up for, you know, creating industrial parks, etc., and technical resources, is India. Vietnam, so etc., don't work for that, really. So you I mean, saying they can do a bit. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I cut you there, Sarif. Are you saying that ultimately the world is waking up to the importance of uh, of India on the on the world stage, essentially, in terms of production? Absol Absolutely, and this goes double for advanced manufacturing. You see, when you talk about China being a world leader in AI, the fact of the matter is, global capability centers uh, that are being opened. Uh, first of all, India is no longer just an IT back office. India is now fast becoming the laboratory of the world because. There are global capability centers being opened almost every day by various uh, Western multinationals and even smaller Western companies in India. And uh, a lot of the chips of the world are actually designed in India. A lot of the aeronautics work is actually now, when you talk about CFD analysis and other things, it's actually done in India in global capability centers of uh, foreign, of Western OEMs. So it is just, and it is always in 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 advanced manufacturing. It is always better to have the engineering and development side co-located with the actual manufacturing side. 
so that enough cross pollination happens and there is you know there are these spillovers that happen all right, so, so, Sarah, so on that note of, of cross pollination, on that note of cross pollination, uh, cross pollination, which is is very interesting, we're, we're going to leave it there. Your director of the Delhi uh, Defence Review, uh, thanks very much for shedding some light for us this evening, Sarah. Thanks very much. Right, thank you for having me.